Hey everybody, I'm Derek, and I'm going to show you how I make music with a Game Boy. Video game music has had a huge impact on the sound of my material. In fact, it wasn't even until I was in my mid-teens that I think I actually even noticed pop music. As a kid, I would even hold a tape recorder up to the speaker of my family's 600-ton Zenith console TV and record Nintendo and Sega music so I could listen to it wherever I wanted to. Needless to say, growing up, I was cool as hell. Anyway, this retro video game sound chip aesthetic shows up a lot in the music I produce because I still love the sound of that old equipment, and some of the compositions that people were able to create under the hardware limitations of the time are really remarkable. I mean, listen to this. If you're not dancing, you might be dead. This guy knows what's up. Oh my god. Getting all this old video game stuff involved in modern music production is my little way of paying tribute to my original sources of inspiration. Now there are actually a number of ways you can use a Game Boy as a synthesizer or instrument. A tracker called LSDJ is by far the most popular. People are able to turn out some amazing music with this, although for me, trackers are both uninspiring and unintuitive. Also, using the Game Boy's buttons to navigate LSDJ's menus is just... Uh... Coming from a more traditional, linear recording background, I found LSDJ's user interface to be a huge obstacle and really not worth the trouble to master. Of course, that's just my own personal opinion. If you've ever looked at an Excel spreadsheet and wished you could play it like an instrument with an NES controller, well, there you go. The method I'm about to break down here allows for a lot more intuitive immediacy, so let's get to it. Links to some of the items you'll need can be found in the description under this video. First, of course, you'll need a Game Boy. With my method, you can use the original Game Boy, Game Boy Pocket, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, or Game Boy Advance SP. If you use a Game Boy Advance SP, however, you'll need to invest in one of these elegant headphone adapters. With a flash card and an emulator, you can also use a Game Boy Micro, but I mean, come on, look at this thing. It's so small, I feel like I'm going to lose it just looking at... Oh, I use my custom Game Boy from Retromodding.com. They built this unit for me some years ago, and I've made some additional modifications to it, including adding a superior audio output and a great IPS display, both also available from Retromodding. Now, in the interest of disclosure, I am an ambassador for the brand, but I wouldn't be if I didn't love what they do. I recommend you take a look at their website and be amazed at the fact that in the year 2023, there are legitimate companies selling a dazzling array of Game Boy buttons. You can buy a Game Boy fanny pack. Eh, make your Game Boy look like a Pop-Tart, I don't care. The next item you'll need is a Game Boy Link Cable. You can still find original Nintendo Link Cables on eBay, but be sure to grab one that fits the Game Boy model you'll be using. My Link Cable came with this little adapter that lets me accommodate all different kinds of Game Boys, which is super convenient, but the thing is so small I can't seem to stop choking on it. The Link Cable is what we will be using to send MIDI data to the Game Boy via item number 3, which is a MIDI interface. I use a Teensy Boy, which is a tiny Arduino computer designed specifically for this purpose. This was made by a company called Cat Skull Electronics, although I believe it's been discontinued and replaced with a newer version since I bought mine years ago. A similar item from Cat Skull will do the trick. To amplify and record your Game Boy's audio, you will need an 8th inch headphone cable. You'll be able to run your signal in stereo or mono depending on what you're going for, and you'll probably also need one of these little adapters to run the sound into your audio interface. These are super easy to choke on. You'll need to grab a USB cable with the appropriate tip to fit into whatever MIDI interface model you have, and finally, a Game Boy Flash Cart, which is basically a game cartridge that lets you rewrite its contents as you see fit, also via USB. Now that we've got all the hardware covered, it's time to put the software we need to use on the Flash Cart. I use a program called MGB, which is available for free via GitHub. MGB essentially turns the Game Boy into a MIDI playable 8-bit synthesizer module, which is a phrase that always gets the party started. MIDI MIDI play to get MGB onto the cartridge, I use another piece of free-to-download utility software called EMS Cart. Use EMS Cart to transfer MGB onto your flash cartridge via USB, and that's it. Pop the cartridge into your Game Boy, and then use your interface to connect your Game Boy to your computer via USB. Open up your workstation, create a track, selecting the appropriate MIDI and audio input settings, and just like that, you're now such a big nerd you have to register with the state. The link below to GitHub where you can download MGB will also provide detailed instructions on how to use the program. But, in a nutshell, each column here represents a MIDI channel and a corresponding sound generator. Channels 1 and 2 allow you to play two different square waves. Channel 3 lets you play a triangle wave. 
and Channel 4 lets you control the Game Boy's noise generator. Setting up on Channel 5 allows you to play the Game Boy's two square waves and triangle wave in poly mode. You can use the Game Boy's D-pad and buttons to modify panning, pulse width, the envelope shape, and some other parameters. What's especially cool here is that you can also control these functions via MIDI CC with an external controller. Here's me turning a knob on an unconnected MIDI controller for illustrative purposes. This is what it would look like! Okay, so let's see how the Game Boy fares in the context of a quick and dirty sequenced hardware jam. So there you go, that's the method that I use to turn my Game Boy into an instrument. Now something to keep in mind is that the audio output on a Game Boy is notoriously noisy, which is not really a bad thing if you're going for the most retro sound you can get, but if you need a nice clean signal I recommend a plugin called Plogue Chip Sounds. Plogue Chip Sounds emulates a ton of retro video game sound chips, and you can do all this without ever having to mess with the hassle and noise of using actual hardware. Now, like I said, this is far from the only way you can turn your Game Boy into an instrument. However, I found this to be the path of least resistance in that you don't need to buy a bunch of expensive new gear, you don't need to learn any complicated new software, and you probably have the most significant piece of hardware you need already kicking around in a drawer somewhere. I mean, there are so many of these old Game Boys in circulation, you just never know where one's gonna- <laughs>